The following is a disclaimer. I gave humans too much credit and assumed that they had critical thinking abilities. I apologize for assuming. The perspective I take in these reviews are pragmatic and not simply regurgitated spec sheets that you could have Googled. You can't Google how a car drives, feels, and what sort of character it has. I don't care about zero to 60 or specs. Neither of those things carry any merit with me. These reviews are intended for normal humans that may potentially be purchasing these cars with thousands of their own hard-earned money and drive on everyday roads with 45 mile per hour speed limits. It is best for fanboys to look elsewhere as this is an objective review and will list both positives and negatives of this car. If you want a commercial, subscribe to the manufacturer's YouTube channel and watch all of their commercials. Finally, the vehicles featured on this channel are either from the manufacturers themselves or a dealership. Exhaust Sports Auto is not paid by either party. These parties are used simply to get access to vehicles for video review. Forgive me for that little noise there, but other than that, this is actually the 2004 Lexus GS300. Who do we have to thank for this little opportunity? It is none other than Johnson Lexus in Durham, North Carolina. And you are more than welcome to contact Danny and buy all the Lexus cars on this lot. Just buy all of them in every color, all of them, the new ones, the old ones, all of it. Uh, so to do that, you can uh, contact Danny's information is down below. But in all seriousness, I have been looking everywhere. I've looked at every single crevice of this planet to get my hands on an older GS like this. And I finally got it. So without further ado, Let's just get into this little review right here. This thing has about 141,000 miles on it, okay? So it's about 16 years old, going on to about 17 years old, and it's got almost 150,000 miles on it. And uh, we're gonna talk more about this in the interior segment, but this is a damn solid car, and it has aged extremely well. And the paint, all of it, I mean, it is in great condition. I can't believe what you get for $6,800. So that's pretty impressive. Now let's talk about the exterior first before I move on to this drive. Now, honestly, the way this car looks in the exterior, it's kind of, um, I have mixed feelings about it. Honestly, I kind of want this car as like a project car. Like this is one of the few cars I'd buy this and just mod the hell out of it. This has like that type of look to it. You know, it's like rear wheel drive. I kind of want to convert this into like a drift car or something it looks kind of cool but kind of like weird at the same time i don't know you let me know in the comment section how you like the way that this vehicle looks but as a whole i do believe that this is a pretty handsome looking vehicle and uh, i do like it as a whole it's a pretty um you know what i'm saying it's got a nice little executive look to it but the looks aren't what makes this car special you know it's all about this drive of course this thing is powered by the legendary two jay-z not one jay-z it's got two jay-z's under the hood it's uh the three liter inline six let me uh let me stop joking around about this engine before a person in the lexus forums has a hissy fit i mean in all seriousness this is the three liter inline six engine it is a absolute legend no obviously it doesn't have like turbochargers on it or anything like that but regardless it is a pretty legendary motor this thing produces about 220 horsepower and about 220 pounds feet of torque, so equal amount. It does zero to 60 in about 8.2 seconds, so it wasn't really the fastest thing in the world. Really, the biggest change for this next generation of GS was, in fact, the addition of a V8 engine. Not just any V8, the same V8 from the LS430, that silky smooth LS430 motor. Yeah, this vehicle has it, but, um, no, well, not this particular one, but like, you know, this generation got it, you know what I mean. So that was kind of the big change there. But you know, right now we're gonna be talking about this because when this generation first came out in like 1997, you know, the first, you know, this was the only engine option you had, this uh, three liter inline six. And this particular model weighs about 3,600 pounds, uh, 3,600 and some change. And uh, the V8 weighs about a little over 3,700 pounds. So there's that. But you know, what I've noticed is this throttle is actually surprisingly touchy. What a gem, what a gem. That was a silky smooth uh, acceleration run right there. And I'm about to take this bad boy out on the highway in a little bit, but that's pretty good. And this thing handled pretty flat, you know what I'm saying? It's got double wishbones in all four corners and that is a great thing. That not only aids it in the handling, but also in the comfort as well. Yeah. That's um, not very quick, but I do like the way this power builds. Got a little lean, of course, in the body. It's an older vehicle. Going over some of these rougher bumps right here. It's soaking up the bumps extremely well. Oh, 
Oh yeah, definitely doing a healthy speed now. Definitely took some time to get up there, but because it's like, you know, naturally aspirated power, you know, it, it, it does, you know, continue to pull. It doesn't just give you all the thrust down low and just like, you know, die off. So I do appreciate that. Just a slight bit of weight noise, nothing that's out of control, especially for a vehicle of this uh, age and era. You know, I don't really mind it at all. It is not double pane glass or anything like that, but it's still pretty freaking quiet and I do like that. There's not a whole lot of tire noise and I kind of expected as much because it's only got 225 wide tires. But yeah, no, that's a pretty refined vehicle. You know, I had this thing up to some uh, pretty respectable speeds right there and uh, no, it was a very quiet car. Yeah, because it's naturally aspirated, of course. I mean, it's no, it doesn't feel super fast or anything like that, but it is fun to drive this car kind of foot to the floor very aggressively. This thing is a very smooth power plant, man. No wonder it's such a legendary engine. I mean, this is not far off from that V8 in terms of uh, smoothness, and I've historically said that 4.3 liter is one of the smoothest engines I have ever experienced. So this is just right up there with that. It's just not as powerful. There's not so much of a sound coming from this V8. I mean, it's just got a little whisper to it, but it's definitely very nice. And I definitely do find this to be a very pleasurable experience. I will say there's some play with the steering. Now, a lot of you are saying that because these are kind of older vehicles. Um, you know, you can expect some of that play, you know, might need new bushings or whatever. And you might be right about that, but you know, that, as of right now, that's the only thing I'm detecting right now. It doesn't feel super wallowy, only when you get it up to speeds, like at the highway speeds I was doing. Even at that speed, you know, it's not super wallowy or anything like that, but it's definitely a softer sprung vehicle, that's that's for sure. And again, I kind of expected that for a vehicle like this, but hey, you got to admit, you know, driving uh, fun was still taken into account. You know, that's why they made this car rear wheel drive. Uh, Lexus particularly, they said that, you know, for maximum driving pleasure, they give you this rear wheel drive car. That's kind of why I want to convert this into like a you know drift car or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's got the aggressive look to it. It's like a 0.29 to 0.31 coefficient of drag. Uh, you know, coefficient of drag is something that they really worked on during this era, like the early era of Lexus cars to kind of quiet the vehicle down, give it the maximum level of stability. Throttle is kind of um, a little touchy, like initially, like in a parking lot speed, but like once you get it up to speed, it feels a little soft. It's kind of interesting. It's only got a five speed transmission. Brakes, you have to get in on them a little bit, but I do like the brakes. Like once you kind of get in on the brakes, it's pretty good. Time it takes a downshift is appropriate for a five speed of this generation. I, I find it to be acceptable. Slight delay, but it's not bad as a whole. I mean, because there's not too many gears for it to go through, um, it kind of gives you the gear relatively, you know, in a, in a decent amount of time. So I don't mind that. But yeah, on paper, it doesn't seem like a super quick car, but honestly out on the road here, this inline six, you know, it's not an insanely heavy car. It's about 3,600 pounds. So. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but I find this to be more enjoyable to ring out than a 2010 IS250 all-wheel drive I drove. Um, I find this motor to be superior and I find this to be a little bit more fun to ring out. And I don't think it's quite as slow as that IS250 was, so there's that. As far as handling and all that good stuff goes, I mean, this car is, again, like I mentioned, a little bit more softly sprung. Don't expect it to be like some rock star in the corners. That's. Uh, some unbelievable Prius driving skills right there. Okay, um, no wonder Prius drivers get all these memes going on. That was pretty ridiculous, but um, as you can see, the chassis on this car isn't terrible it's just like the suspension even those double wishbones it's like it's like a softly sprung suspension setup and obviously this chassis is not as solid as the new lexus cars but i'm just saying uh, you know you could tell that driving confidence was taken into account here but there's still like slop in every single like demeanor of this car suspension steering all that stuff again you could upgrade bushings do a little alignment on it all that good stuff that's up to you or even if you want to just change up the, spe the suspension altogether and make it into a more aggressive feeling car i think you can actually do that here again this is a fun little project car i would actually probably put new suspension on here and uh, put new wheel and tire setup like new black set of wheels on it these are 17 inch wheels obviously that's going to help with the uh, ride quality I don't think this car needs to ride this well. I would actually probably put like a, 
a uh, larger set of wheels and tires on here, maybe 18 or 19, so maybe 18, something like that. Yeah, I really like this motor, man. This motor is definitely a gem. Would I put a turbo or something on it? I don't know, like, I, I don't like to put force induction onto a car. Uh, I would rather it come from the factory that way. That's really up to you, you know, the sky's the limit with this car, I guess. And like I mentioned, it's not so much high speed instability I'm sensing, it's just like the in general wallowiness of this car that's been built into it. That's the only like cons I, I, I've been able to find with this car as a whole, dude. Like practically as like an everyday vehicle, this is a great little luxury car. Just a slight bit of, you know, it's like white noise basically, this, uh, this wind noise that's kind of producing, it's nothing ridiculous at all. Like with all Lexus cars, it's a very satisfactory, um, everyday car basically once you're at a stop though like you can tell this car is dead silent so that's that's very impressive if this thing had double pane glass it would be even more quieter so that's great it's not an unbelievable driving experience but it's a pleasurable one you know it's a nice old time capsule similar to like the ls's and all that stuff so it's just i like how well these cars age and i think that's why everybody likes to buy these like older lexus cars because you know, I don't mind that it's not the most dynamic thing in the world. That's not what makes a everyday car, a street car pleasurable to me. It's the softness that does make it a better street car every day. Like this thing is not jolting at all. Like even over the roughest bumps, like when I was going over that highway, kind of patchy stuff right there, this was soaking up the bumps really well. And the sensation of speed, you feel like you're going way faster than you are in this thing getting all the red lights of course so that's nice but yeah enough of the driving uh, i think we've uh, established that this is a pretty good driving car you'd be satisfied driving this every day let's move on to this uh interior i guess all right so now that we are at a stop here no more distractions let's talk about this interior so like all lexus cars even with 141,000 miles nearly 17 years old it's aged extremely well like you would expect even the seats, you know, this is kind of more of that beige color, slight little wrinkles. I mean, this is a slightly more ruched or roushed leather, you know, whatever you want to call that slightly more wrinkled leather in the middle here. But uh, it still has like slight little wrinkles on this bolster right here. I can tell this is probably more so of a highway car for most people. This car is damn comfortable. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's used more as a highway cruiser more than anything else because you could do hella miles in this thing. So yeah, interior has aged extremely well, like you'd expect. Um, is it as solid as the LS? No, because there are more plastics being used and when you touch up against some of this stuff uh, You could hear it kind of creak a little bit, but nobody's gonna be touching up against that I would as a whole consider this to be a pretty uh, solid interior space It's more so that old-school Lexus interior, which I, I really like it's got like, this more rubberized Material kind of like the early LS 400s had I kind of like this material a lot You know like the Camry's and stuff started to use this afterwards. I do appreciate this material. It's kind of weird but it's solid at the same time i like it it's just a little bit some of this uh, plastic bits being used down here which kind of creak a little bit when you touch up against it otherwise when you drive it there are no creaks and rattles with this car it's very solid the steering wheel again that very interesting it's not a leather material but it's it's like a very weird kind of rubberized material but again i like it a lot it's just like this strange indentation going on here on this uh right side here but other than that this is ex extremely well maintained and uh it's pretty much perfect it's like the perfect size too. I like dripping onto this little circular steering wheel. You got one touch up and down windows. Again, more of this nice padded uh, soft touch materials and uh, this little leather padding right here. I don't know if it's real leather or not. It might be, it might not, I don't care. And it's got this nice little wood insert. And um, you know, you do have memory seats, physical parking brake, automatic headlights, no Mark Levinson, this particular one, but it's a, it's an okay sounding uh, sound system. I just had the radio on. It was all right. I guess you do have your classic little uh, cassette, of course, you know, little cassette thing. And uh, CD player is actually in the glove box, and the glove box is actually a pretty decent size, so that's pretty good. I love the gauge cluster in this car. It's very uh, a unique gauge cluster, kind of sporty, but kind of like of its time, but like it's kind of futuristic at the same time. But it, it's very cool. I appreciate the gauge cluster. I, I think that's one of my most favorite things about this generation GS and these interiors. So I do like that a lot. Uh, otherwise, it's very clean interior space, similar to what you would get in pretty much the other uh, Lexus cars of its time. Obviously, there's no infotainment, but infotainment was an option, I believe, uh, obviously. You just got a very simple center stack here with your HVAC and uh, kind of shows you what your radio station is and all that good stuff. Of course, there's no push button. Yes, you have to put the key in it. And uh, again, all these things that you interact with, seats, steering wheel, uh, this little gear lever knob, all very solid. You know, the wood is not all scratched up and stupid. 
Got a little cigarette lighter with a little ashtray right there. Uh, even the center armrest is actually pretty well aged and you have a you know, a little bit of space in there actually. So that's pretty good. You do have a sunroof up here as well. And uh, seeing out of this car is very easy. Actually, they increased the glass by 10% in here. So it's easier to see compared to that older generation GS, like that first generation GS. So that's one of the changes that they made here. So yes, yeah, very easy car to see out of. It's like a fishbowl in here. So I appreciate that. Now rear seats. Honestly, the rear seats are not like massive. This whole car is about 189 inches long. So it's not a massive car by any stretch of the imagination but obviously i can sit behind myself i'm five foot eleven headroom is not an issue front or rear five foot eleven i can definitely sit behind myself granted i do sit a little bit closer to the steering wheel again this is not a huge car but i can fit behind myself but the seats are stupid comfortable both in the front and the rear but i think the rear is even more plush so it's just very nicely padded and of course the car rides so well like you know obviously it's got double wishbones in all four corners so it rides beautifully dude i mean it's almost like it's riding on air suspension honestly that's how well this car rides so it's super non-fatiguing you can do like a thousand miles in it in like a day and not be uncomfortable in this car so that's great uh, there's no pass through and i highly doubt you can fold down those seats so there's that and uh, nobody can sit in the middle because there's like this big old like you know center tunnel there but you do have hvac in the rear also the trunk is not massive either but you do have a spare tire back there so that's pretty nice but you know as a whole it's not an unbelievably practical machine it's not super large but um it's a very cool driving experience and i think you can do a lot with this as like you know a project car if you will this is you know put some new suspension on it you know some new springs i don't know and uh, lower it and put some black wheels on it. it could look pretty cool uh i don't know let me know your thoughts like what what you would do with this vehicle or if you just leave it stock because this is a very satisfying car to drive every single day so that's pretty cool uh it's really up to your imagination what you want to do with this car i don't know something like this it's in such pristine condition and for such a cheap price i might just use it as a cheap daily driver i don't know but uh 8.2 seconds to 60 i mean don't get that don't let that discourage you honestly this car is fast enough it has a good sensation of speed that's what i like and it handles fine um it's not razor sharp but i don't need it to be i think it handles just fine for what it is the dynamic is right because it's rear wheel drive and i appreciate that and this motor is a gem very buttery smooth so I was happy I was able to check this car out. I was, I'm was. i really hoping I can check out the next generation of this car. That's the only other Lexus that I'm like super, like very keen on driving because I really like the way that car looks. I think it's a cool looking car. So with that, that pretty much concludes this review. The next video will be up on the screen. So you can check that out in the end screen. See you there.